Master Sergeant Retired Anna Maria This is Veterans Onward to Prosperity. And Julie, what's your last name? I keep. I'm Mesquita, Julie Mesquita. Julie Mesquita. Thank you. I did not want to butcher your last name. <laughs> what a beautiful first and last name, Julie Mesquita. So, in your next chapter, when you finally did um, leave the military, hung up your uniform, put your boots away, now you're focusing on your twins and your family, you're still moving forward <laughs> with your passion. So tell us, what is it you're doing? I know it is you're doing. I saw your LinkedIn <laughs> profile, but tell us, what are you doing? Okay, well, and, and this is very recent, um, but I noticed that in my area, there are um, several small, we're cities and towns that are all close together, and that's Burlington, Oakville, Milton, and Mississauga, and it is difficult to figure out what's going on around this area, and right now, there's, uh, there's a lot going on, like Maple Fest, and St. Patty's Day is coming up, and spring break activities, so this for this this information you have to really dig and the organization for that doesn't exist they there's several different websites or people sharing information on facebook so it's there's no sort of one source or no sort of combined source so i decided to start a newsletter for a community so that people don't miss out on the activities and the the fun things going on uh, and it includes restaurants walking trails and hiking trails uh, it includes uh, activities, things you need to buy tickets for. And uh, and I let the audience know way ahead of time when to buy the tickets and, you know, in time for, for the event. So, yeah, this is a weekly newsletter. comes out every Thursday. Called Wow, Going. what a commitment. Thank you. That's a lot of research. That's a lot of uh, contact. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work. I mean, to even do it once a month. I used to work on a newsletter for someone I think at one point in time my command believe it or not <laughs> but that what we needed to do was have a newsletter from our headquarters command and so we had the generals you know a letter from the general letter from the command he had me write it for him <laughs> <laughs> yes um and that was a lot of work because I worked with the editor you know and, and getting all of that put together and that was just once a month for you to do that once a week, wow. Yeah, I'm doing it once a week. I had to, I spent some time though beforehand um, teaching myself how to use uh, the Adobe Suite, like Photoshop, uh, how to, uh, I taught myself how to video edit. I taught myself um, how to do newsletters and how to copyright. So I spent some time during COVID uh, learning all these things and reading up. And I hear too that you're learning and also growing and developing with the Disability Channel. How did all that come about? Uh, that was interesting. Uh, actually, it all started because I was filling in for a friend, uh, Tracy, uh, Unstoppable Tracy, asked me to, uh, she said she didn't have a guest that day, and she asked me if I could just go. <laughs> so I said, sure. <laughs> And that's how it all started. That's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I was introduced to the Disability Channel, told them about my background, told them about my passions, and that's how it all got started. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're both disabled, disabled uh, veterans, in, in case you're wondering. Um, so the, the match with the mission of the Disability Channel mis matches perfectly. And what's really, really cool is one of my passions is helping people in their next chapter. I was an army career counselor. Okay. So I help people develop their careers in the military. And because we were army reserve, I helped them develop also civilian. So when I hear that there's problems with transition active service, into civilian employment at mm. first that did not resonate with me because i was so busy helping hundreds possibly thousands of um soldiers and immediate family members to get the education they needed the training they needed whatever else they needed so that they can develop in their careers right mm -hmm. 
along comes the, the media training at the Disability Channel. And um, my, my mind went to work quickly in knowing that somebody coming off the battlefield, not have it like an 11 Bravo or 12 Bravo, somebody that doesn't have any of employment skills other than shooting and might consider having a lifetime career working behind the camera or in front of the camera or doing any of the, the media marketing that is growing like all get out in as far as a, a career goes, right? Mm -hmm. They could actually get the training at the disability channel and have a, a lifetime career in media. So that's how I got into it. And it's interesting that you got into it through being a guest with Unstoppable Trees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do find it interesting that um, your passion remains uh, to help people transition into civilian life. Like it, it was while you were enlisted and, uh, and it is now. So now I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna turn the tables on you, Julie. You're doing the same thing. You're doing PR for all of the events that are taking place in and around your area. Yes. Isn't it cool how what it is that, that we have been used to doing and we did it with our uniform on that we've now continued to find a way to do it <laughs> with our uniform hanging up in the closet. We, it's just, it became part of us. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you're, you're right. Uh, in, in my case, it was, uh, I was trying to draw on any skill I could that uh, would actually do something, like you said, in, in civilian life, because I, I was artillery for 11 years, and um, I don't know what that would be. How does that transfer be. to a civilian job? Yeah. Like, how do I <laughs> oh my go God. to You would hope it does, and, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But and there's, there's a lot of skills there um, yes. and people don't know about. There's a lot of skills there. Uh, I've, I've heard news of, um, for instance, somebody coming in from the military and working in a high position in a bank. And uh, and I was told that he was very oppressive, uh, that he had things running like clockwork. <laughs> he was organized. He had spreadsheets and uh, and he had things moving. So uh so there are some skills there in terms of the leadership, the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And you brought up another, another good point. And the fact that we should be so highly employable when we're leaving the service, because we've got the discipline and we've got the skills that we're built, we've built. Right. And not only that, but we've got a drive. We have a drive. Yeah. Yeah. People who stick in the military are usually go-getters. Yeah, because they, they wouldn't be there if they weren't. Um, so yeah, me too. I still like to do stuff. I still like to go for things. Yeah. Yes. And that's part of the culture. It is. It is. It's uh, and, and hard work. Hard work is um, respected in that environment. Yes. Um, and but it's challenging in the civilian environment. It's challenging to be respected for your hard work. It's also challenging when you're looking at your team and you're the only one that's actually doing the hard work. <laughs> I hear you. And you're going, That happens what? everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that happens everywhere. But I agree with you that uh, when you have a certain standard and, and folks around you don't want to uh, have the same standard, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's not like you can order them. Yeah, and you can't, and you know what? That was the biggest challenge. I couldn't order my family around. <laughs> you can't my order one year olds would not listen. <laughs> no, that's when you go into the motivational theories and go on, or the motivational <laughs> content. It's like, how do you motivate people? You can't order them. <laughs> You're going to laugh, but at one point, my kids were doing push ups when they did things wrong. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I don't think I ever did that with my they kids, but it came good. close. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think what you're doing is awesome because uh, again, from a family standpoint, what do you do with your extra time? You're making, you're wanting to make memories, right? 
Mm. That's what it's all about. You got your parents and you got your kids and you got your grandparents, perhaps. Also, what do you do with your extra time? You make memories. Yeah. Yeah. And so what you're doing is allowing people to pre-plan so that they don't miss out on opportunities to make memories. I think it's really cool what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if people want to know more about what you're doing and they see this on the disability channel and they're in that area and they want to subscribe to what it is that you're doing, how do they do it? Well, they go to going-places.ca and there's a subscribe button right on that uh, web page. And that's I would it. encourage people to do that if you live in that area um, and uh, don't miss out on opportunities to make memories exactly i say if you like to go places you have to sign up for this newsletter and you'll get one every week so you don't miss out exactly well uh, you know what julie thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing what it is that you're doing and this is an example audience of how you can move forward <laughs> <laughs> from your military experience and training. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, it's very nice uh, to meet you. Nice meeting you too. So I'm gonna wrap this show up in a moment. So don't go away, I'll be right back.